Yes, guys. Yes, people. Welcome back to Chelsea Fan TV. Welcome back to another episode of Five Things We Learned. Straight after a 5-0 victory against Barrow in the third round of the Carabao Cup. Um, yeah, what a game. What a game. We touched on this yesterday. Really, really comprehensive and professional performance from Chelsea. We handled it the way Chelsea should be handling it. And yeah, I'm really happy with the way that we played. It was a really good performance from us. We managed to flex the depth that we have. And I know it is Barrow, so I'm not trying to um, prop it too much. But the depth is crazy. The depth is unbelievable. We had the game done in about 15, 20 minutes. We were already about three goals up by then. Um, and Kunku got two early goals. And there was an own goal from the goalkeeper off a Jao Felix free kick, which is very unlucky for him. Um, I think it bounced off the post, bounced off the goalkeeper's leg, and then rolled into the back of the net. Um, by the second half, I think, yeah, it was, it was 3-0 by halftime. Second half, Mudrick finds Neto for his first ever Chelsea goal. Good good little uh, moment for Mudrick as well, because he gets his assist. And um, the fifth goal was just the easiest hat-trick goal that Kunku could have ever asked for, because the goalkeeper just second and third guessed himself when he was on the ball. Um... Yeah, so we're going to do five things on this, which you have to bear with me for first off, because five things you learnt from a 5-0 win against Barrow, it's like, yeah, yeah, it is Barrow. But there is some things you can take from this game, so we're going to touch on that a little bit. Number one, our depth. Our depth is, is so good, so good. Especially going forward. Because that's probably the front four that you're going to see um, for most of the Conference League games. And some of the Cup games too. As long as we're not facing any crazy opposition like a Man City or anything for example. But to use the likes of Neto, Nkunku, Jao Felix and Mudrik in Cup matches is a ridiculous cheat code. And like there might even be interchanges throughout the season. You might see a Noni go in instead of a Neto for example. Maybe you see Sancho get the odd game on the left-hand side. But even then, look at the names that we're talking about. You throw Sancho into the left over Mudrick, suddenly it's even improved off that. Like, the more I think about it, domestic cups, as long as we don't um, walk into a Manchester City, we really should be competing for at least one of them. And, like, that quietly leads into my second point. The first one is the depth is insane. The second one is we've got to make the most of it a little bit. We got to because with the fact that we have this sort of depth and we got the conference league and everything, we have such a great opportunity to rotate without having to have questions about who plays in what game, who plays in the other. We got so many options. And now this is the sort of thing that you should be flexing in domestic cup competitions. So with that in mind... We have to be taking them seriously and we have to at least be getting one of these domestic cups in the bag. As long as we don't face any opposition that's obviously head and shoulders clear of us like a Manchester City, for example. But we have to make the most of the depth that we have and also the amount of rotation that we can do in, the, in all of these competitions. We literally have an A team and a B team and that's because we stockpiled on all of these players unnecessarily and all of this BS. So make the most of it. Make the most of it. The B team already looks like it's in a much better position in terms of understanding Maresca and understanding his style of play. We have to capitalise on that. We have to keep building on that. So, just keep doing it. Keep developing. And there's no reason why we can't go for the Cups unless we face a Manchester City. Like, I keep trying to add that disclaimer in there before someone tries to clip this up if we buck a Man City, for example. Bun that. Um, third point. We handled Barrow the way a big club should. And, like, that is my biggest take from this game. Because I, I keep taking things back to the Wimbledon match when we played them and they were a League 2 side last season. I, I don't know if they still are or not. But we absolutely struggled through that match and it looked offensive. It was genuinely offensive to watch. I thought, we're really getting out-tacticed by, by a League 2 team. Wow. This game, we just handled business the way a big club should handle business. And that's what I liked about it. 
That's what I liked about it. We did exactly what we're expected to do against the sort of opposition. No ifs, no buts, no periods where we, we kind of struggled a little bit. No periods where we were under the cosh a little bit. No, dominance for 90 minutes and we keep it stepping and we keep moving to the next one. Simple as. Um, number four. Nkunku has the opportunity for a big season of stat padding. Because as it stands in the starting 11, I'm not really too sure where we fit him in for the Premier League games. Nicholas Jackson is clearly our starting striker. No issues there. Sancho should be playing on the left on form and ability alone. Same thing with Cole Palmer. Do I need to explain that one? Don't think so. Um, Noni Madueke on the right-hand side. I don't really think Nkunku should be playing on the right anyway. I think Nkunku's much better in central areas of the pitch, so I don't really want to see him play on the wings. Unless I get proven otherwise as the season goes on. So, as it stands, Nkunku might just be doing up conference and Carabao Cup minutes. Which, if that's the case, what a cheat code. What a ridiculous cheat code. You have a bagsman like Nkunku that we're bringing off the bench for Premier League games. And, and we're just bringing, we're bringing to Conference League matches to bully players. Cool. Cool. Exactly what I said in the past point. We have to be taking these domestics seriously. Because... We have enough strength in depth at, that we can play fit, completely different 11s that, to be honest, have much more quality than a lot of other teams' B teams even have. So, we have to make the most of it. We have to. And Kunku, though, is going to be amazing being shameless with all the GNA that he's going to rack up this season. We will be there. This man already has a hat trick before the likes of Havertz, um, Saka, Rashford, Son... Nunes, I don't like Nunes even means anything. Um, Xerxy, all of them lot. All of them lot. And long may it continue. Long may it continue. Um, final point. I want to I wanna touch on Cassidy's performance. Because like he looked really, really impressive yesterday. He was dominant in midfield. He was a, a beast in the air. Um, defensively won all his tackles. His passing was good on the ball as well. Especially in the second half. I think he grew with his passing a lot more in the second half as well. But yeah, really, really good performance from him. Happy with the way that he played. Good performance. And yeah, hopefully he can continue to show that level in the Conference League and in the Carabao Cup. Because this B team, you're going to have a lot of minutes and a lot of minutes together. So we're going to see the cohesion build. We're going to see them continue to develop and develop an understanding of each other. And I look forward to it. I look forward to it. And... Somehow, somehow I got five points. Fair enough. Right, big up to everybody that's locked in, though. Hit the likes, subscribe, all of that crap. And yeah, up the chills. Up the chills. Big up, everybody.